What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. Today's lesson is going to be very different because I'm not going to teach you new vocabulary or grammar structures. As you may know, at Christmas and in summer, I make a video on my favorite TV shows and movies. And today I want to share with you five TV shows, one documentary and one movie that I've seen so far this year in 2022 and they are my favorites. So don't grab your vocabulary notebook and let's get going. So let's get down to business. The first TV show that I want to talk about today is Manifest. I've just finished watching it and I must say it's made my summer. Why do I like it? I'm going to mention different reasons why I like this TV show. The first one is the plot. I really like it because I've always been into movies and series about space and planes. Manifest is about a plane that takes off from Jamaica and lands in New York five and a half years later. It's very surprising because no time has passed for the passengers on the plane who didn't even age. However, when they return home, they realize that their lives had turned upside down and everybody around them moved on with their lives. So they really struggle to get it together. Where was the plane all this time? And why was it gone? It's a big mystery that the government and the passengers are trying to solve. On top of everything else, people who were on the flight 828 start experiencing inexplicable and supernatural things. They hear voices and see things. It's very tiring, but these callings, as they call them, are supposed to do good and help people. The second reason why I enjoyed this TV show is that there is a lot of mystery and the characters are absorbed in solving puzzles and connecting the dots. One of the most repeated phrases is it's all connected and there seems to be something bigger guiding the characters who are all in the same boat. This TV show reminded me of Lost and in fact, Josh Dallas, the actor who plays Ben, described Manifest as it's Lost meets This Is Us. Apart from mystery, Manifest focuses on the family aspect, relationships and of course, romance. Thirdly, I liked the characters. My favorite one is Michaela. She's a young girl who was on the plane together with her brother, Ben, and her nephew. She's a very charismatic cop who is hardworking and she's determined to solve this mystery. And last but not least, this TV show is set in New York, a city I want to visit in the near future. And of course, you can hear an American accent, which I really like. And it's a great chance to pay attention to the way the characters speak and pronounce words. For now, there are three seasons and each one contains a lot of episodes over 10, like 13 or 17, and the fourth season has been confirmed. The second TV show I want to talk about is called The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. Although the title is gigantic, it's a miniseries. It's a mystery thriller that reminded me of movies based on the books by Agatha Christie. There is a murder and an investigation. This TV show is about a woman who is struggling to get her act together after some dramatic events in her life. Anna has a lot of time on her hands and spends long hours staring out the window. One day she witnesses a murder and starts to investigate the case on her own because nobody else seems to believe her. In fact, she's not 100% sure either because she mixes wine with pills and on top of that she has a very vivid imagination. I really like the main actress who plays Anna, Kristen Bell, and I have a bonus recommendation for you. There is a series 
also on Netflix that she stars called The Good Place. In a nutshell, I really liked this TV show so much so that I watched it twice and I really hope there will be one more season. And now let's move on to the third TV show, This Is Us. I've already spoken about this TV show in one of the previous editions, but I want to mention it one more time because sadly, after six seasons, This Is Us has come to an end and there is only one episode left for me. So if you haven't watched this TV show yet, it's time because you won't have to wait for new episodes like I did because the whole TV show is available on Amazon. So This Is Us follows the Pearson family across the decades, mixing the past, present and future. The script is beautifully written, oftentimes describing the same situation from different angles. I reckon This Is Us strikes a chord with its viewers because it depicts everyday situations, complex relationships and common problems that we can all relate to. I'm sure there will be one or two characters you'll feel identified with. Others will inspire you and teach something valuable. All of them have their personal struggle. Anxiety, addiction, obesity, diseases, to name but a few. They will and share profound thoughts that will linger in your memory forever. This TV show is bound to make you think and reflect on what's really important, on what really matters. Personally, it made me think about the passage of time, the fleeting nature of life, and the urgent need to live in the present, here and now, and enjoy good things in life while they last. It's the most touching TV show by far. I cried my eyes out when watching this multi-generational saga, especially the second to last episode. Tears were streaming down my face and I just couldn't stop. According to my friend Victor, if you can watch it without shedding a tear, you're dead inside. In a nutshell, if you're looking for something that will make you feel, don't miss this sweet and touching TV show. And guys, before we continue with more recommendations, just a super quick reminder. If you like today's lesson, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to English Bits if you like my channel. Thank you very much. Number four, Virgin River. I've spoken about this TV show before as well, but I want to mention it once again because the fourth season has been just released on Netflix. It's a feel-good series that is very easy to watch and follow. It's set in a picturesque little town and it contains romance, relationships, friendships, daily and common problems, and so forth. Here you can hear an American accent and I think it's a great TV show to improve your listening skills because it's very easy to understand. And the main actress here is Sophie from This Is Us. Right now I'm watching this series and I really like it. It's very easy to watch and it's very enjoyable. Number five, Somebody Feed Phil. I've spoken about this TV show as well in the previous editions, but I want to bring it up once again because the fifth season has just dropped on Netflix. So if you're a foodie and love traveling, I'm sure you'll like this TV show. Each episode focuses on one place around the world. So the new season will take you to five places. To Oaxaca in Mexico, Portland and Maine in the USA, Madrid in Spain and to Helsinki in Finland. I really enjoyed the one filmed in Madrid. Actually, I've seen it twice, maybe because it was familiar and also because you can get to know the best chef in the world, David Munoz. He's a super talented chef and a very inspiring and interesting person. And the host of this TV show, Phil, is a super friendly and nice guy. And now I want to talk about a movie that I've seen twice because I really enjoyed it. It's called Four to Dinner 
It's Italian and it's about soulmates. I think I'm a hopeless romantic, a romanticizer who believes in soulmates, but I'm starting to think that maybe mine died. I don't know. Anyways, this movie reflects on whether everyone has a soulmate or it's BS. Four to Dinner is about four people who meet through mutual friends at the same time. They start dating and the movie presents two realities and plays with what if scenario. What would have happened if the four characters had paired up in a different couple? That's why two different stories are being told at the same time and you are intrigued to know which story is the true one. Let me know if you believe in soulmates or you think that there is no such thing. And last but not least, one documentary called Winter on Fire. You can find it both on Netflix and YouTube. Winter on Fire has become relevant due to the war in Ukraine. Sadly, Russia keeps attacking Ukraine every day, and I really hope that good will triumph over evil and as soon as possible. I highly recommend watching this documentary, especially if you want to know about the origin of this conflict. So Winter on Fire is a documentary about a revolution that took place in Kiev in the winter of 2013 and 2014. It's about a courageous fight for freedom, for the right to choose your own path, and it shows the power of unity that managed to overthrow Yanukovych. I really admire bravery that Ukrainians showed and they fought against what they thought was wrong. I cried a lot when watching this documentary. I remember following these events closely back then and I was surprised to see my former classmate, Sergei Kova, who I shared a desk with at school. So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this summer lesson. And if you want more recommendations, check out my Christmas edition. And if you enjoyed today's lesson, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to English Bits, and remember that you can catch me on Instagram, where I teach English every day. Thank you for watching today's lesson, and see you next Wednesday with the shirts. Have a lovely Sunday. Ciao for now!